fantastic that you're here because we are going to start to graph functions, all right? And these questions are usually worth loads of points on your maths exam. And unfortunately, and not necessarily, a lot of students therefore think, oh, this must be too difficult, I can't solve these problems, let's skip it, all right? And I'm gonna show you, and I know that you will agree with me after watching these videos, that actually you are able to answer the vast majority of these questions and get most of the points, yeah? And you'll be able to do that also with confidence. All right, now I will do two or three videos on this particular problem, otherwise it will uh, yeah, be uh, too long of a video. Yeah. But um, the question is always divided into two parts. The first part is finishing the table and graphing the actual function. And the second part is usually answering some questions about your graph, okay? And because you can't read this probably because it's too small, I divided it so I have the first part here. Uh, of the question and then we will do the second part later which is also then uh, written with bigger letters all right but as you can see the first part complete the table for the function and they give a function fx equals 3 over x minus x squared and they give me this table and I have to complete it one two uh, three boxes are empty and this is usually worth three points which means one point for each box you fill in with the correct number, all right? Now, what do I have to do? I can even check that because I've done some for me. I have to evaluate my function for the value of x, yeah? But even before I do that, I ask myself, what kind of a function is this? Because I have different types of functions, yeah? And I prepared this sheet for you, yeah? Because this is what you should be asking yourself every time. I have linear functions, yeah, where the highest power of x is a 1, and if I draw those, it will be a line, yeah. Quadratic functions, x squared, yeah, a 2 is the highest power of x, a parabola, beautiful symmetrical curve. Cubic functions, to the power of 3, some sort of s, yeah. Then we have reciprocal functions, where I have an x in a denominator of a fraction. And what does that mean? Well, x can't be 0, so I'll have two parts, yeah? I have an asymptote in the middle. My graph consists out of two parts. And I also can get an exponential function with x in the exponent, yeah? And that looks roughly uh, like, let's say, my salary curve. Hopefully, anyway, it goes up exponentially, yeah? So if I go back to the question, what kind of a function do I have? Oh, that's not the question. Where is the question? Oh, there, there it is. What kind of a function do I have? Well, I have an x in the denominator, so I'm gonna get some sort of reciprocal function, yeah? Where my graph will consist out of two parts. It's not gonna look exactly like this, but it will consist out of two parts. And therefore, I understand these blocks here in the middle, yeah? Because they give me values x from minus three to minus 0.2, then there is some sort of, yeah, black space, and then it goes from 0.2 to three again, you see that? And that must be that asymptote, yeah, where uh, my curve gets divided. Okay. I'm going to put in my calculator minus one, yeah? What is it going to, uh, if I do that here, minus one, three over minus one, minus minus one squared. Uh, please be careful with those brackets, okay? And if you do that properly, uh, minus three, minus one, you're gonna get a minus four. So I'm going to put here now, and that is one point minus four. And it is the same for minus a half. And if you do that properly, you get minus 6.25. And if I put in two, I'm going to get minus 2.5. Okay, so actually I have earned already three points yeah, for just substituting those values in my function uh, for x, and I get a particular y value. Now I want to show you a very important tool yeah, this is your calculator, okay? Because this table, your calculator can produce for you. Yeah, I just wanna show you how. It's still very important that you're able to find it yourself, but I wanna show you how you can get this table in your calculator, okay? I want you to go to mode. Yeah, press mode on your calculator, and then you get this menu, and for me, number seven says table, yeah? And probably yours for number seven will say table as well. Yeah? It depends on the type of calculator. I'm gonna press seven, okay. And it says fx. So now I'm gonna put in the equation. So I do a bracket three divided by x, and my x is alpha, and then bracket. There's this red x here at the top, yeah? Three divided by x. 
closing bracket, minus, I'll just do a bracket there again, just to be sure, alpha bracket, so I have an x, closing bracket, squared. Anyway, you gotta type in the function, equals. Then it's gonna ask me, where do you want your table to start? And I want it to start at minus three, equals. Where do you want it to end? I want it to end at three equals. And what kind of steps do you want? Yeah, what should be the step in between? Well, let me do a half, 0 0.5 equals. And then it gives me a table where for an x value of minus 3, you probably can't see that, but my fx is minus 10. And indeed, minus 3 is minus 10. But if I scroll down a little bit and I go to, well, what is it when x is minus 1? My table says then fx, uh, so y should be minus 4. You see that? And what about if I do 2, so I scroll down using my arrows, well when x is 2, my fx should be minus 2.5. Okay, fantastic, you see? So if I know how to use my calculator uh, properly, let me just put it back, so mode, and then on 1, so I can uh, use it again later. If I know how to use my calculator properly, I can actually check my work very easily. Yeah? Three points, thank you very much. And then, on the grid, they usually provide you with a grid, draw the graph of fx, yeah, four, and they give me boundaries, x big or equal to minus three, but smaller or equal, minus 0 0.2, and between 0 0.2 and three. And that makes sense, yeah, those two uh, domains, yeah, those two boundaries, because you have that asymptote in the middle. Okay, here we go. Now, what is important now? This is usually worth four points, yeah, to graph the function. And you get three points for plotting the coordinates correctly. And then you get one more point for the actual graph, which I guess, or which I think is the hardest part, yeah? But plotting the coordinates, if you do that, if you do that with a certain amount of accuracy, you just get three points, yeah? So x minus three minus 10, minus three, minus 10. So I plot that there, and perhaps you want to do a cross, yeah? And you check if it's really minus three and really minus 10. Because sometimes students accidentally go one block to the left or to the right, yeah? Or one block up and down. Minus two, minus 5.5. Minus two, minus five, that is minus six. So exactly in between, is minus 5.5, yeah? Minus one, minus four. So you make sure you understand the scale of your axis, yeah? If one, two, three, four, five blocks is one, yeah? That, uh, sorry, if five blocks is five, that makes one block one, yeah? If five blocks is one, then one block is 0 0.2, understand it. Minus 0 0.2, minus 15. Minus 0 0.2, minus 15 over there, and I forgot one, which is minus a half, minus 6.25. Minus a half, minus two, minus four, minus a half, that's there, yeah? Minus 6.25, so that's gonna be there, okay. And you do the same thing with the same amount of accuracy on the other side, okay? And I've done that already just to save time, okay? So as you can see, I have some sort of curve here, you see that, and it goes down and I'll get something there as well. And I have plotted it, and this is what you will get, yeah, after you graph it. Now, there are a few things what I want to say about this very important. First of all, you do not connect the two parts. This is a reciprocal function, and all reciprocal functions consist out of two parts. Why? Because x cannot be zero, yeah, so, also, for this one, the function is 3 over x minus x squared. So x cannot be a 0, okay? So you do not connect it. Second thing I want to say again is, plot those coordinates accurately and with care. Make sure you understand the skill, okay? Because that is, if you do that, you get most of the points for drawing it. Thirdly, what do I want to say? So you can see it, I've used a marker. However, you have to use a super sharp pencil when you do this yourself. 
okay? It has to be a sharp pencil. And you draw the curve as a curve. You do not sketch it, okay? You do not connect the dots with straight lines. No, it is a curve. And you do that in one go. And that takes practice, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, all right. Your curve needs to go exactly through those coordinates you plotted. Okay, so accuracy with your coordinates, do not connect it, yeah, two parts in this particular case because it's a reciprocal function. Last thing I wanted to say, I almost forgot, very important, they give you the boundary, that's not the question, this is the question. They give you the boundary from minus 3 to minus 0 0.2 and from 0 0.2 to 3. So I have to start at minus 3 and stop at minus 0 0.2. I cannot continue, I cannot continue, I will lose points. I really have to stay within those boundaries. Same on the other side, they say from 0 0.2 to 3. So I start at 0 0.2 and I go to 3. I do not continue, even the slightest centimeter, half centimeter, millimeter. It's wrong because you didn't respect the boundaries. You didn't respect the domain, all right? So make sure you start very clearly at 0 0.2 and finish very clearly for axis three, okay? Now I'm gonna stop now and my next part is going to be about the questions about this graph, uh, which is usually worth loads of points as well. So I'll see you there, bye-bye.